At the very beginning of the episode 56, Yang Ling is shown entertaining the ninth prince Han Fei. Han Fei enjoyed the show wholeheartedly that night. The next day, Han Fei and Si Fang goes to the place where the murder took place in the previous night. Han Fei analyze the blood stained over the earth and suspect the killer to have killed the victim in just one sword strike. Indeed it was true. Si Fang then sees the gate opened and conclude that the victim must have seen something unusual before he was killed. His suspicion is indeed true, as the victim has overheard the conversation of the group Slick Octahedron before he was killed. They went and inspect the room but found out that most of the traces were cleared beforehand. Fortunately they found an apple on the ground. They were not surprised to see the clue as at least they were expecting the group to leave some clue behind. They found the apple to be rotten by just a day which was indeed strange for them. However, they figure out the smell to be somehow familiar. After the inspection end, while they were returning, two members from the Slick Octahedron were seen watching them secretly from the top of the roof. They were planning to target Han Fei as they feel he is a big threat to them. Soon after at the Purple Orchid House, Prince of Qin Kingdom, Ying Sheng, Han Fei and Si Fang meet to discuss about the assassin group. As Prince Ying Sheng picks the teacup he suddenly frowned. Han Fei and Si Fang were confused on seeing him frowning. Prince Ying Sheng then tells them that he seems to remember having the tea before in the palace of Xianjian and it is called Snow-Headed Silver Shuttle. Si Fang then asks Prince Ying Sheng if he was hiding something not wanting to tell them about it. But Prince Ying Sheng was still silent. So Si Fang takes the situation by saying that the tea was purchased by his grandfather, Prime Minister Jiang Kedi from Barbarian. He also remind him about the case of the slick octahedron relating to the scent of the tea, snow-headed silver shuttle which further relates to the familiar person named Lord Cheng Jiao. Prince Ying Sheng got surprised to see how knowledgeable Si Fang is as he has only heard his name but never saw his intelligence. He then claimed to have been having the tea with Lord Cheng Jiao in the past. Rumor has it that the tea is rare. Only the North of Barbarian could produce it. Lord Cheng Jiao loved the tea since childhood. He spent a large amount of money to purchase it. He was often yelled by Prince Ying Sheng. The tea was specially originated in the land of Qin. Then a merchant brought the tea to the west and the barbarians planted this tea in the cold land of the northwest. Due to the difference in climate, this result in a unique fragrance. No other plants in the Seven Kingdom is able to produce this tea with the same fragrance. Si Fang then tells Prince Ying Sheng that they found the smell of the tea on the apple in the place where Slick Octahedron stationed before. As by investigating the history of Lord Cheng Jiao they came to conclusion that Lord Cheng Jiao is somehow directly related to the Slick Octahedron. Han Fei soon tells Prince Ying Sheng that the one who discovered the sword how Prince Ying Sheng hold was none other than Lord Cheng Jiao. On the other side, at the General Mansion, Bai Yifei, and General Zhou Yui, were plotting plans to annihilate Prince Han Fei and his group indirectly through Slick Octahedron. The plan is this, Bai Yifei troops will stay outside city. General Zhou Yui troops will block the exits of the Purple Orchid House. And for the final fatal bow, the Slick Octahedron will do. The very day after their plan, the Slick Octahedron began their act quickly. Meanwhile, in the Purple Orchid House, Han Fei, Prince Ying Sheng, Miss Zinu and Zifang were discussing on how to overturn the plans of their enemy, while Wei Zhuang and Guinea were watching over through the window and instantly sees the enemy approaching. Wei Zhuang then leaves to handle the enemy. Han Fei asks Guinea to escort Prince Ying Sheng safely. While at the intense situation, suddenly Nan Yi arrives and inform Han Fei that he was summoned by his royal father, the King of Han. Han Fei then instantly understood that it was all the plan of their enemy General Zhou Yue. However he could not deny the summoning message. So he reluctantly depart for the palace. And the episode ends here. Subscribe for next episode. And thank you for watching. Episode 57 The Knights of Fire After Han Fei left Purple Orchid House for the palace, two carriage, one escorting Li Si and the other escorting Prince Ying Sheng upon departing for the Qin Kingdom were stopped by the troops of General Zhou Yui. Li Si instantly understood the situation and tries to frighten them by showing them number one swordsman of that period Gnei but the troops still refused to make way for them. 
Upon seeing their disrespect against the greatest kin kind of men Voili C, Gne slightly draws sword and the troops of kin marched forward to exchange the blow between them. On the other side, Wise Wang meets Moi who caused Tang Chi to get severely injured and finally to unconsciousness. Moi then threatens him by saying that Slick Octahedron group begins to invade Purple Orchid House and there is no way Wise Wang could do anything about it. Upon hearing what Moi say Wise Wang asks him whether he has the ability to stop him and buy enough time for the Slick Octahedron. But surprisingly Moi has exchanged blows with Wise Wang before and he seems to be not fool. Hence he brings out his companion, the Gu Fei belong to the named hundreds of birds. And the scene shifts where Han Fei was still on the carriage which was marching for the palace but Han Fei soon realized that the carriage is taking the wrong roads without going through the palace roads. However he stays calm to see what surprises are waiting for him to meet. Many times, the group of slick octahedron begins their action to invade the purple orchid house, among which Lord Cheng Jia was one of them who gradually enters the house with an evil smile. This is how the episode 57 ends. Thank you for watching and stay well. Episode 58 Spying Shadow K.I.D. Episode 58 begins by showing Nanyu in the form of Miss Zenu and Sifang looking towards the closed door of the purple orchid house, which was giving a high knocking sound from outside. Indeed the troops of General Jiuyi were knocking the door. Sifang and Nanyu in the form of Miss Zenu figured out that Prince Ying is the main target they are looking for in the purple orchid house. Unfortunate, Prince Ying Sheng has already left purple orchid house and nobody knows. Soon unexpectedly they see Miss K.I.D. opening the door and secretly telling something in General Jiuyi's ear. At her return she gives a strange look towards Zifang and Nanyu who is in the form of Zinu. Upon seeing her strange expression they checked and found the real K.I.D. is dead in her room. Just after few moment Purple Orchid House was attacked by the Slick Octahedron. <laughs> Then the scene shifts to where Li Si carriage was stopped by the General Jiu Ai's troops. There Genie analyzed that General Jiu Ai has power both inside and outside of the Han Kingdom. During the intense situation fourth Prince Han arrives and invites Li Si to have drinks with him. Li Si upon seeing that they could only accept the invitation and unable to find any other way to go out agrees and goes with the fourth prince to have drinks. Meanwhile, Han arrives at the mysterious house. On the other side Moi groups attacks Wise Wang continuously but he is not easy to be deal with. Wise Wang then kill those members within a moment. Bei Ai Feng attacks suddenly but immediately dodged and encountered his attacks by Wise Wang. No doubt, Wise Wang is a disciple of Ghost Valley. Moi then threatens him regarding the annihilation plans in Purple Orchid House. Wise Wang remains calm as he knows that Prince Ying Sheng has already left the house. Episode 59 begins by showing Slick Octahedron approaching a particular room to find the target but sees only Zifang alone sitting there crossed leg. Cheng Jia then threatens him to kill if he do not hand over Prince Ying Sheng not knowing that Prince Ying has already left the purple orchid house. Sifang asks him to sit and offer him a tea snow-headed silver shuttle. Cheng Jia was taken aback to see the tea. Sifang also revealed him that he is just a dead shadow and not the real Cheng Jiao. Cheng Jia was even more shocked to discover his own secret by other. Sifang then shows him a ring that belonged to Cheng Jiao who was already dead. The present Cheng Jiao tries to put the ring but the ring is not fitting on his thumb and soon got frustrated revealing a murderous aura. The other side Hanf unexpectedly sees Lady Mingzu and realized that he was trapped which if he was caught by his royal further he would be unforgivable for him. Lady Mingzu tees him for falling into her trap however Hanf calm himself and tells Lady Mingzu that she is foolish to think that way. Lady Mingzu could not understand why Hanf was still calm and dared to say such cool words in such an intense situation. Soon Han King arrives at the door of Lady Mingzu but surprisingly Honglian arrives and convinced her father to see her drawings and took him away. She could do that because Han King loves his daughter very much. Han teases Lady Mingzu for her failure in trapping him. Meanwhile Moa and Beifeng attacks Wise Wang once again but instantly defeated. This is how episode 59 ends.
Episode 60 begins by showing Sifang and Chen Jiao where Sifang address him Miss KID because Chen Jiao have a split characteristics. Soon he turns into KID. Sifang then made her realize that she is also not a real KID and show him the real KID dead on the next room floor. Also he tells him that every characters excluding himself were all just his imagination. He even tells him about the net trap organization which is very dangerous assassin group in the Kin Kingdom. And those people who are killed by them for soul were captured in the slick octahedron cage. Then the scene shifts to Hanf and Lady Mengzu. Lady Mengzu upon seeing her plan failed she tries to seduce and attack Hanf but surprisingly stopped by the Nilin sword. Hence she have to send him away. In the fourth prince house Genie tricks fourth prince with drinks and held him captive. In this way they bid farewell and left the Han kingdom. Soon after they meet Hanf and Miss Zanu. Prince Yingshan asks Hanf to join hand in conquering the world to govern it with laws and enlightened with Confucianism. Meanwhile, Sifang tries to show the shadow his real face the source of all the shadow with a mirror. But suddenly wise Wang arrives and toss the mirror telling them that the main character is very dangerous assassin. Too late, the main assassin shows his face. Soon he exchanges an epic blows with wise Wang. Unexpectedly, Yang Glingjie appears out of nowhere and attack at the assassin. In such an intense situation suddenly there arrives Bai Yifei with his sword claiming to take Yang Glingjie. The scene then shifts to Hanf and real Miss Zinu on the border wall. Miss Zinu asks him why he didn't promise Prince Ying Sheng. Before Hanf answer her question the sea's far away a big blasting of fire which is obviously the purple orchid house. This is how the season 1 ends. Subscribe for more videos. Thank you for watching.